What's up, Moral Combat fans? My name is Zach. Yeehaw! My name is Nathan. I hated that. And uh, I am Zach's brother. Yeah, <clears throat> we are siblings. I am siblings. his little brother. Siblings. Little brother. That's a weird thing to say now. That's what we I've said that on. I've said that on stages. Yeah. Introducing you on stage. Yeah. For over 10 years. Yeah. 15 years. My name's Nathan. This is my little brother, Zach. Hi, my name is Nathan. This is my little brother, Zach. Yeah. They used to be our intro for every blouse show. Here on the Moral Combat Podcast, we talk about religious trauma because we were both raised in the Christian evangelical faith. Our parents are pastors and I am 33 years old and it's been now 17, 18 years since I walked away. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but every day is another day to process it. You yes. know what I mean? Especially with other people and yes. other people's and other people's circumstances. Um, we made it out alive. We did because not everyone else does. Not everyone else does. Um, Zachary, sir, how are you? You know, I am doing okay. Okay. How are, how are you doing? One word answer is unacceptable in the Moral Combat Podcast. Um, you know what? <sighs> I'm doing. Okay. Okay. I'll go first. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah. It has been a very busy week of nursing, acting, and parenting, and hey. fiancéing. Nice. Uh, me and my fiancé went out on a cafe early afternoon date this last week to specifically talk about our wedding Ooh. and other plans around that and some decisions we're making, which I can't say on this podcast, but so that's been exciting. That is exciting. Love is in the air. Love is in the air tonight. Um, You know, my kid's getting grounded. It's great. He's seventh grade. So that's awesome. You know, that's when you started to get grounded a lot with seventh grade. Seventh and eighth grade is when everything changed for you. Seventh grade, because mm-hmm. I'm watching him go through it. Such an amazing year. Okay. It makes a lot of sense why there's a lot of movies made about like 12 to 13 year olds because mm. like Stranger Things. Wasn't yeah. Stranger Things like that age? Started about that age, yeah. Maybe they were a little younger. It's like 11, 12, right? Something like that. They're playing D&D in the dungeon. They have like all this personality. They have these feelings. They get so upset. They're like, and like that's Evan. He's got so much to say. He's got these great creative thoughts. His emotions are so high and so low and you're grounded and you're grounded. You're grounded again. (laughs) Yeah. I love you. And he's like, I love you too. I know what I did. And I'm like, I know, you know, see in two hours, go to your room. Yeah. No, not going to. It's it's the closet. Put him in the closet. Get in the closet. Get in the closet. (laughs) No, not true. Hold your breath. Put this plastic bag over your head. That's what what it is. What the hell are you talking about? Dude, nursing. Wow. Nursing. Um, so yeah, that it's been a good week. That's good. Busy week. Nice. And acting's going great. Yeah. How's uh, how's the new class treating you? It's fine. We have three more this year and then it'll start back up in January. And I have a scene with a lovely actor on Tuesday, um, from a film called Romancing the Stone. I've never seen it. Oh, I love that film, dude. <laughs> And, uh, but it's a great script. You know, I've been doing a lot of scenes. The scripts aren't that great. And I, the only reason why I know they're not that great is because I've been acting them. Mm. And what you start to learn is acting a script that's written well versus acting a script that's not written well. You know, there's a lot of really shitty scripts out there. Mm. And all these writers on strike. I'm like, you can't be on strike if you're a shitty writer. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's a good opinion. Uh, yeah, only good writers can go on strike. This is true. Um, but, uh, and so this script was great it's funny it's alive it's i'm like it's like in the middle of a jungle and there's like this lady getting shot at and i'm like shooting back at the guy that's shooting at her and then her and i get in this conversation so like the whole scene's like a commotion you know it's Mm -hmm. like ah oh oh we're up we're up you know cool my jeep my jeep you know that type of stuff so um yeah it should be it should be exciting on tuesday that is exciting at seven so you're you're planning on doing it again on january same teacher, same everything. <laughs> You're like, are you seriously Nathan going to keep this up? <laughs> well, you, are you? It's the same teacher though, is it not? Stan Roth. Yeah, you can check him out online. www.stanrothacting.com. Yeah, he's the best. Nice, he's incredible. Um, well, I I'm starting to learn that uh, right as an independent, new and upcoming, trying to figure out the world of acting and enjoying it. There's really you build your portfolio or you practice, which 
makes it simple. And I feel like that goes with any sort of like being, you know, a music producer or anything that you do is going to be practice unless you're trying to like build your portfolio online so that you can like try to get things released or blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so with acting, it's like, I have to have a portfolio to do anything. So right now I don't have that. So all I'm doing is like, that's not even what it's about. It's just about me like practicing acting and Mm acting is really hard and stressful and scary. Yeah. And so. Especially when you're uh, just doing it for a class. Just for a class. There's like no real, I have goals, but the goals are coming out as I do it more. Mm -hmm. I don't even fully know what I'm doing this besides the fact that it's helping my mental health Mm -hmm. and it's making me feel a lot more alive and purposeful and it's like for me and confidence too. yeah confidence building yeah. it fits my personality and so for that reason i feel like it would be foolish to not do more of these classes mm. it's a kind of therapy you know like it really is and i meet a lot of new people which making friends isn't easy mm. so i'm making like new friends that are all kind of focused around the same sort of fears and confidence building and practice and some better than others and everyone's very supportive and it's really hard and like, I really enjoy it. So we'll see. I think like, I don't know where life's going to be at in January because it is a hard class to keep up with and mm. Tuesdays are crazy right now. But um, I think I'll keep doing it as long as I don't have plans to like pursue acting in more direct ways, like in a movie, like an independent film or a student totally. film or totally auditioning more, you know? So I think I'll definitely start auditioning at some point from here. Have fun with it, but mm. it's going great. It's going great. Thank fun. you for asking. Fun. It is very fun. It is fun. It is fun. I'm doing my lines right now. In your brain. Should we get started or do you want to tell me a little bit about your life? Uh, my life's the same it's been. I love that. <clears throat> then let's jump in. Let's just jump in. Um, Here we go. A moment to read out. I like literally didn't take a big enough breath on that one. Yeah. Here on um, uh, Moral Combat, welcome back to another episode of A Moment to Reddit featuring Amongst your host Nathan and Zach. Um, if you've watched our podcast at all, then you know exactly what we're talking about at the moment to Reddit. It's where we hop on Reddit, Mm -hmm. where there is just endless anonymous conversation going on, on different issues and fun things. And it's full of everything. One of those things is religious trauma. And there's all these amazing forms. And so what we like to do is hop on Reddit and just start picking up the weeks or the month's most recent posts that we find intriguing that people are sharing about their experience around leaving the faith, atheism, ex-Catholicism, ex-Presbyterianism, ex-Jehovah Witness. These are all forms on Reddit that you can go on and go down the black hole that is religious trauma, people talking about shit. It is crazy. Very triggering. Um, But like, what great content for here on Moral Combat and it's beyond relatable. I think that's why I love doing it is some of the crazy stuff we'll find. I'm like, that happened to me. Yes. With my parents yeah, it's like, too. It, it's almost, it's an uncomfortable how close it is, but it's also comforting to know that like, you're not just alone. Mm-hmm. You're very much not alone at all. Mm-hmm. This is like, I think. In, in the more research we've done online, because I used to not look up religious trauma ever before we started this podcast. I'd never looked into it. So the more we've looked into it, the more I'm like, there's millions. And also like the more, the more we, the longer we do this, there's like more podcasts coming out. So every time I'm on Reddit, looking at posts, there's always people sharing new deconstruction, you know, podcast. And it's like all about complex, like PTSD. And I'm like, and for like the first six months, that's all we did was just go down the rabbit hole of, learning about religious trauma, talking about religious trauma. And we, as we've said many times, are moving into the interviewing as our studio can be fit for that. And we feel more comfortable to jump into that world of interviewing because we know it's just going to be wonderful and also tough yeah. to be uh, adding that much work to this podcast. Okay. Um, so let's just jump into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it right let's here. Let's get right into it. 
our uh, first post here comes from user low conference 5177 yes we're reading them off our phones today because uh it was like 16 pages to print out some of, some of these names you wonder if it's the reddit generated name or if like that's really their name well i think a lot of it's anonymous i would imagine a lot of it's anonymous i'm not like deep diving into these people's portfolios but uh, sometimes you get like... Well, have you ever made a new Reddit account and like, your first name, if you don't choose one, it's just a randomly Reddit generated name? No. And it's always like <laughs> sloppy seconds, yeah. 712. Yeah, yeah, it's yes. like, whoa, funny. Right. Use it. <laughs> um, so this is on uh, the Reddit forum X Christian and Low Conference 5177 says, Christians are so pretentious, trigger warning. Was told recently that the reason I was experiencing multiple hospitalizations in one year due to a newly diagnosed rare neurological disorder was because I had fallen from grace and that God has gone silent and stopped blessing me due to my deconstruction and going non-contact with my abusive and religious family. Amazing. I hit them with atheists and friends from the LGBT community were there for me when I was dying. Where were the Christians when I prayed for help? I was desperate enough and prayed at one point. Interesting. <laughs> no response. Laugh out loud. Ugh, and don't get me started with God allowed you to be sick so you can lean on him in this time of need. Okay, there's no cure and it's lifelong. Nice God you have there. That's a very typical um, approach that I've noticed Christians have. God's putting this heartache on you so that you have to lean on him because he needs you right. to lean on him. So I guess like when I'm thinking about like what you're just saying is what I heard, the question I had as a kid to other Christians, like youth pastors, or whatever would be like, why does God let bad things happen? Right. That's kind of what we're like. If the God, if God is real or whatever, how could God allow somebody to develop these conditions mm -hmm. and you're saying that the response is because god need you to lean on him because you to, to teach you, you need a, lesson, a savior to teach you a lesson teach you a, i mean it lessons or not it's your lesson is you need to love god more that's the lesson right. and it's a cop out because it gives god can be the worst person and it's also incredibly passive aggressive and like not based off of love when this is supposed to be a god of agape the greek word of unconditional love and that ugh, there's so many examples, not only in the Bible, but in all of our lives, raised Christian, where that's just not the case. It's you do this because God wants you to worship him. God wants you to be in pain so that you need him. Because if you didn't need him, what are you going to do? You're going to kill everybody? You're mm. going to kill people? It's like you need God. It's like, no, you, you, you are God. You don't need God. Mm, right. It's like you, you, you don't need to lean on God. You're not sick because you didn't pray hard enough. Because if it was that easy, you'd probably be a strong believer if prayer worked that well. Right. Yeah. Interesting. And from their post, they say, you know, that uh, that they're being punished for their... Uh, for, for writing off their from, family. From falling off grace and that God has gone silent, stop blessing me due to my deconstruction and going no contact with my abusive and religious family. Yeah. Um, we've talked about that a lot on this, this cast. Like we don't, we haven't, you know, like a lot of people choose to go completely non-contact with their relatives that are religious. Mm -hmm. um, which like, so this person that does that for the sake of their sanity and their well-being and survival really mental health survival they're still in contact then with the church somehow mm -hmm. right these religious people because if you're raised in it if you're grown in it i'm just speculating it's really hard to just like break free of the cult mm -hmm. or the group so they're in contact with you so when you're going through certain conditions maybe all of your friends and everybody you knew was still in the church mm -hmm. so then you have a diagnosis of cancer or something very real and that's a very vulnerable place to be in and I think that that is a place that people are find their walks in Jesus because it is such a scary and like you're going to die or you have this condition. And so just the fact that it's like a prying, you know, it's like a um, prowling mentality, mm -hmm. like, you know, oh, and like, so to tell somebody that like the reason why you're suffering so badly is because you walked away mm -hmm. is... And there's ex wild, but then again, we all burn in hell if we don't believe in Jesus, right? Hundred percent. So and, that's like, and there's examples of this exact behavior in the Bible. So to be a believer and to be saying this isn't a crazy thing to say. It's in your Bible. 
it's all over Job. Job was the perfect man. Oh, yeah, he was completely and persecuted. And God right? and Satan legit had an argument on if Job would fault or not love God anymore if his life got incredibly difficult. They're like, and God bets. was like, God was like, <laughs> let me show you, yeah. Satan. We're gonna Watch ruin it. his life and take everything, his family, his wealth for forty years, and he's gonna hate it. But he's never gonna stop loving me, and he doesn't. In the story, right. the mythological story of Job. Yeah, it's a powerful story too. And it's like, wow, what a God of love that he has to prove the human that loves him, yeah. not his love for us, but the humans that love him by torturing them and showing how much they love him. It's like something I could see, and I'm just going to put this out there. I hate politics and bringing it up, but it's like something I could see like someone like Donald Trump doing. Like, you love me. You love me the mostest. I'm going to ruin your life. And you're still going to love me. Yeah. Because I just want to prove to everybody how much you love yeah. me. You love me. It's going to be beautiful. I'm going to let him go. That father right there is going to take his son and he's going to go slice his throat for me because he loves me so much, but I'll stop him. I'll stop him. I'll stop him right before he slices his throat. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah. They love me so much. They'll they'll kill their children for me. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Wow. Maybe Trump knew, like, I'll just follow the same mentality of God in the Bible. I'll do the same thing. It's interesting. It is interesting. Great connection. Thanks, man. Um, There's a lot of examples in the Bible of how God is that type of God. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would make a lot of sense for a Christian to say that to somebody. Right. And they're like... Well, literally, the LGBTQ plus community is coming and help. And then they like say that I did pray because I was desperate. And that, I know what that feels like. I, yeah. I, that happens if you've been raised in the church and you have religious trauma, like no matter how much you've healed or grown, you will find yourself praying, mm-hmm. which isn't bad. Prayers no. never should be bad. But for us, it can feel bad. Prayer can, is a fucked up thing when you walk away. Yeah. And so you try to figure it out and there are situations, and I can't even think of it right now, but I know there are situations I find myself in where I will be like, why do I want to pray so bad to God right now? And I'll do it and I'll feel better knowing that it's like, damn, that's crazy that I am so still have that like channel of like release, right? Mm. Because like as a kid, you know, you're like freaking out and you're like, God, I just come before you and pray that you'll take my fears away and then you'd feel stronger. Because it was like built in you that that was like the code, you mm-hmm. know. But the moment you walk away, God goes silent. But if you do it, because it's like this mental freaking thing that happens. So yeah, she went out praying because I feel bad because there's nothing wrong with prayer. Prayer is a good thing. It can be. It can be a really good thing. She goes, I was desperate enough and prayed at one point. Mm. Go to our first comment on this post. And this comes from Albion the Tank. I'm sorry you are dealing with that. They have to stay soup. They they have to say stupid shit like that because otherwise the problem would be with God. That's much more threatening to their worldview than the problem being you. Mm-hmm. What's great about that comment is that's exactly what we just said. Mm-hmm. The problem is with God in this situation, but from their standpoint, the problem is you. Well, God can't ever be the problem. So any problem you have has to be with you. Yeah. In the religion. Sin is missing the mark. Yeah. God is omnipotent and, and invincible. And, and if and you were born with diseases, no God wanted you to have those diseases. Yeah. That's a weird one. Such a weird one that I, I, I think defeats a lot of arguments. I've also heard that with, because sometimes there's no denying, like for the most strongest Christians, they'll still even find ways to even, like, yeah, you know, there's no answer for that. God's a mysterious God, but he has a plan. God works in mysterious ways. Like, that's his plan? Yeah. And it's so mysterious. That's a mysteriously evil plan. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mysteriously evil plan. Well, let's move on. Thank you so much, Low Conference. Um, interesting name. And thank you, Albion the Tank. Let's, uh, let's keep moving right on here. This next one comes from user Ambivalent Angelic. I don't even know what the rest of it is. But Ambivalent Angelic. Angelic, ex-Catholic, ex-Christian. Here we go. Is it worth telling my family I no longer believe? Mm. No, don't do what I did. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I love this. I like this post yeah. because it made me really think about what I did. Yeah. Just thinking out loud. They say, I have struggled with belief for the last few years. For the last three years, I have been studying part-time at a super progressive Christian seminary, RIP. We're so sorry. Ultimately, it has been my studies that have brought me out of religious belief. That's interesting, right? 
I'm going to go to school. And then going to school, you're like, I'm done with learning from what I just learned. Mm. What I just learned is evil. Mm. <laughs> if I tell my family that I no longer believe, there will be some who will argue with me and tell me that I still believe. Interesting argument. There will be others who will tell me that they are praying for me to return to belief. My initial instinct is to not tell them. Should I tell them at all? Hmm. Or the, the situation, man, it is such a struggle because it's a real situation. Um, I really Choose your, pick your battles. Pick, pick your battles. I wonder how old you that's are. That's a battle where I guarantee you, depending on how Christian your parents are, that's a battle where you've already lost the war. Yeah. Oh, my friend, you were born into that. Or, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, it also depends. Like, like, do you still live with your parents? If, right. you still, if you still live with your parents and you're like 15, 16, like you were, <laughs> yeah, like what I, I would say, wait until you're about 18, 19. Yeah, wait till you're moved out. Wait till you're like out. Free. Free. Because some parents would take such an offense to that, that they would ruin your relationship. And then in the following years, boot you out at the worst time possible yeah. so that you have to learn all of the hardest life lessons at the youngest time you should learn them. Right. Um, and I'm not saying that's this person's family. That's why I'm more of like, well, I wonder what their age is. I wonder if they're not living with their parents. Cause if you're not living with your parents, I'm like, yes, All right. be true to yourself Go and tell it. them. So you're, so if you're, if you are living with your parents, your answer is. I would say bite your tongue for a little bit. Do you like walking on hot coals? You know? <sighs> yeah. Answer a question with a question. Yeah. That's what I'd say. If you're living yeah. with your parents, I'm going to ask you another question. Yeah. If you're not living with your parents, tell them. Pick your battles still. I would personally say you're, you, yeah, it's better to be real with your family than to not, even if it's going to choose. So like no matter what it is, you would say honesty and openness, I'm coming, I'm vulnerability. From, from my family experience, I have known families that will legit never speak to their children again if they ever learned that. And that's another battle. Where it's or like, vice versa. Yeah. The kids end up not yeah, talking to yeah, their parents yeah. ever again yeah. because of it coming So it's, accept, it's accepting the possibilities of those outcomes because religion takes over families. Like it took over our family and this person's family too, where they're like, there's people in the family that will be like, nope, you still believe. I don't believe you. Yeah. And there's other ones that are like, well, I'm going to be praying for you that God speaks to you again and you come back. I get both worlds. It, that's still, there's no support there. You're not going to get support at all. So accepting that, understanding that, Going into it is one thing. And if you're questioning, if you should tell them, yeah, my biggest question is, what's your living situation like? And I, yeah, I think like you, there's no right or wrong answer here. Mm -mm. Every situation needs to be specific to its situation, that family. Yeah. Um, every family deserves that. Every mm -hmm. person, every kid that's like trying to deconstruct this and walk out of the, you know, walk away from it and find joy or peace of mind. Like, I, we don't know your parents. Mm -mm. I know my parents and uh, it was aggressive. Yeah. It was a really aggressive experience. Um, and I was 15 and I took them out to dinner to an Italian restaurant called Giorgio's. And I was very professional about it, very mature. It's like the same way my dad used to take married, like premarital couples out for marriage counseling. I'd yeah. take them out to a nice restaurant. He would like command the conversation. I took my parents out to dinner and I was like, here's the deal, parents. I have something I need to tell you. Yeah. Go ahead and eat your spaghetti. It's going to be a long night. Yeah. I don't think I believe in God anymore. Or I think what I told them was, I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want to be a Christian anymore. And they accept, they, they, they knew that that was, I think they knew the conversation was coming because I like could never hide anything. And it was all, it was a big deal. I made it such a big deal. I didn't know how to not make it a big deal. How could it not be a big deal? So much of my healing in life now of course, it's a big deal. So much of my healing in my life from my experiences way after that experience has been, what do I want to make a big deal? Yeah. Yeah. Because if I don't make it a big deal, guess what? It's not going to become a big deal. Yeah. And then there's a lot of other things in my life that deserve that weight. Yeah. And so at that time, there wasn't much else that was bigger. That was such a big deal. I, could, I felt like I couldn't move on as a person. Mm -hmm. I was so... I was getting in trouble so much because I didn't know how to think. I was like, the only way I knew how to combat with my parents was to be like, now I'm an asshole. <laughs> and they're like, you're grounded. And I was grounded all the time. Yeah. So it was like, I got to figure this out. I figured it out. I don't even want to be a Christian anymore. That's the yeah. problem. So I thought I was going to be free. I thought, was, I thought they were going to be like, legitimately was like thinking they're going to be like cool with it. Because they like want me to be like, they make wanna, your own choice. They don't want to be, they don't want to deal with this. Yeah. They want me to like, I could find my own path. Oh, I was so mistaken. That's the risk you take is yeah. that if you're still under your parents' house and you're like 15 years old and you think that you have the independence to live your own free life, 
That might not be the case. And it might get way worse. Yeah. Well, and and if your goal is to stop going to church and stop studying the Bible and you are living under their roof, under their command, they might make you study the Bible 400 times more. <laughs> they might make you go to church in way hopes more. hopes that you forget that you don't want to believe anymore. Yeah. Um, which is wild because normally that will make you want it's obviously to hate a backfiring. It more. And, yeah, you know, I I think that yeah, it's pretty pretty ridiculous that that was an approach to try to keep me in check. But I think that that's also the same approach in our first post where it was like, oh, the reason why you're dealing with this disease or this trauma and this suffering is because you walked away from the faith mm. and you did your parents wrong. I was told that. Not like diseases, but so many people in the church were mm-hmm. like, you're going to be the, like, you're probably going to be the reason why things don't work out for your father, for, for why your parents suffer mm-hmm. because of you doing this. And it was just like, ouch, ouch, ooh, 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 oh, I'm going to have to deal with that forever. No, not forever. It, it, well, it's wonderful thing to tell a 16 year old, 15 year old. Yeah. You're the reason why your parents are going to be depressed and hate their lives. Right. Because you decided to walk away because yeah. you shouldn't have choice or any agency. Because you were born into this family that knew the truth and all the other thousand religions in the world didn't know the truth. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's ridiculous, man. It's it's, it's a hundred percent a ridiculous thing to think. It is. And for those going through it, and if you come across this podcast, I mean, if you see your own post and we're talking about your post here, um, like just realize that you are, if you're under the, if you're in your parents' house and you're like underage, um, like, unfortunately, like, there's not much you can do besides well, and in my get ex- through that in time. In my experience, it's just get through that time first. You, you, you can't, as much as you feel like you have the agency to move out at 15 and 16 and that you can take control of your life, sadly, I'm so sorry, you just don't. What's amazing is that there's this the internet now. I didn't have read it back then. Yeah, like I know. This, whoever this person is posting, I just, I think that's what's amazing. It is. And like, we're taking that post that they're like, I don't want my parents. I don't know if it's good that my parents will see this. Regardless, I need support. So this is anonymous. That anonymous person will watch this maybe. And this is how much we believe it's a big fucking deal. Yeah, exactly. So if you're deciding to pull out of the Christian faith and you're freaking out and you don't know what else to do because you're stuck at your parents' house and they're just drilling it down. You hold fast, my friend. Yes. Keep pushing through. You're not alone. Yeah. Um, first comment here from Captain Call. Love that. That's that better names here. Captain Call, ex-Presbyterian, says, I deconverted in February and told my dad earlier last month. I waited a bit because I wanted to be sure of my decision before I caused him any pain. That's a lot already. Yeah. (laughs) He's a devout evangelical. And after I told him, he was distraught and started crying really bitterly. Mm -hmm. It was hard to watch, but I felt that it was better that he know who I am than to live a lie. He's the only one in my family I've told so far, but besides my sister, none of them are as religious as him. So it shouldn't be too difficult. If the topic of faith never really comes up in conversation with your family, then I wouldn't bother to say anything unless they ask. I only told my dad because he's always bringing up God and the Bible in conversation. And eventually I had enough. Mm. Yeah. It's from, it's, it's a family to family basis, man. And there's some parents that are incredibly extreme. Yeah. But I think it's like devout evangelical Mm -hmm. as our parents. Yeah. I think evangelical is the word. If you come from an evangelical family, then it's just a little different. And if there's one thing, yeah. And if there's one thing that my, me and Zach, I'm speaking for you here. No, but yeah. I just know because we say it so much on this cast, like the whole goal is to heal. Mm. And if you've, or if you're going through active trauma in that, in the faith, in that Christian evangelical faith, because of your parents and you're feeling traumatized and you're feeling you're suffering, then like, it's really hard to heal while you're actively being like going through that trauma. And so you have to like figure out what you're going through and accept it and learn what it is so that you can like rise above it when the time comes or, you know, by learning about it. Um, but like having, you know, like flipping the narrative, like in Christianity, they're always like God's grace, grace of God. Mm. Right. So like always that if you can learn how to have grace for your own parents, who are the evangelical devout Christians. Like it's not about accepting their, you don't have to accept their beliefs. You don't have to accept anything they're doing, but it's more of like, 
I recognize that you're brainwashed and you're stuck in a cult and I am breaking free. Mm -hmm. If you're able to hold that and actually recognize that as being part of this, you might have a little more space for the people in your family besides canceling them. Mm. Not saying that that's the right approach. I think canceling is fine. I think it's absolutely important. But like these situations are sticky. Yeah. So this person here, knowing that, like my father is a devout evangelical Christian and I know I'm going to break their hearts. That There was a part of me that knew I was going to break my parents' hearts. Yeah. I didn't know that they weren't going to let me think for myself, but I knew it was going to hurt. That's why I took them out to dinner. That's why I tried to do it as professionally and softly as possible. And they cried a lot after it. That's because we knew that our life was the church and that you were saying you didn't want to live that life anymore. So it's basically taking every second you've ever breathed with your family on what you're supposed to be in this existence and saying you don't want to be that anymore. So it's just so much weight for them. Yeah. And it's such a weight off your shoulders as a young child to be like, I need to tell you my truth. Absolutely. And they're like, you shouldn't have told us your truth. You did, Your truth has broken yeah, me. Yeah, you've just broken my heart. And it's like, well, this me. is worse. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is way well, worse. If I would have known this would have gone this way, I probably wouldn't have told you anything. Yeah. Yeah. Which isn't a good place to be as a child ever. Not until you're in a more... I thought I was so grown up and I was, I mean, you got to get out. You got to break free. Mm -hmm. When you, when you recognize a cult, when you, when, if you're a kid and you're 15 years old and your parents are in their forties and you're like, do you guys know that you're in, that you might be stuck in a cult? And they're like, <gasps> pray for him. You're Demon. like, no. And it's like a nightmare. Yeah. Like you think you found the answer because you did, but they're like, no, you're not. That's not the answer. That's why we found our answer. Yeah. Your answer is not right. Yeah. I feel for this person, you know, like they tiptoed, you know, they're, and then they hurt their dad by just being alive. Yeah. Hey, I'm alive. And I know that hurts you. I am so sorry. It's like, yeah, that's part of this. It's also. <laughs> Not good. everyone deals with that. It's also good to have these parents questioning what they believe because what they believe is that now your son's going to burn forever. Your son's going to burn forever now. I think most parents don't like to believe that. So they just but skip, exactly. they skip around it. And they're like, that's who the am most, I to judge? You'll face God in heaven and be judged then. That's the most important part of the cult's belief is that everyone that doesn't believe it is burning for eternity way more than this life is ever going to be eternity you're eternity, burning yeah. in pain and agony and hatred and horrible and it's like if that is the truth and that's what you believe and you want to believe it with your whole whole life that that's the god of love that created this life the god of love then yeah tell your parents so they question if that's true because i can't believe that's true right i can't i have a question for you mm -hmm. if i just don't believe forever and do whatever I want. And then right before my last breath, I'm like, fine, I'll give my life to Christ. You give my life to Christ. Do you go to heaven? In the, in the words of the Bible, you do. Well then cheat code, hack everybody. Yeah. Live your dreams. Yeah. And then right before you pass out, accept that shit. If you just, <laughs> if you just want to, you know, play it safe. Just play it safe. Yeah. Yeah. I think most people do. They're like, all right, if you're real, take me now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. because what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to die and it's not real. And it's like, well, at least I tried at the end. They blink and they're roly-poly. They're like, ah, oh, shit, I knew it wasn't real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is going to be a quick life. Or God is punishing them and now you're roly-poly. Somebody made a really good comment that like you come back as your pets. That'd so how, however you treated your pet is how you're going to be treated in your next life. Oh, it's like, man. well, you know. Overall, pretty good. Yeah, overall, would love that life. <laughs> overall, pretty good. Yeah. Okay, not bad. <laughs> yeah. I learned. Learned. I've become a better pet owner the older I've gotten. Yeah. Um. Next comment real quick, finishing up this post. Radiant Elk 1258 says, I never made a formal announcement. The people who are close to me know because it came up naturally. Other mm. people might know through gossip, but it doesn't usually come up. It did feel scary to let people know even when it came up naturally. I didn't know how they would react. Usually they were sad and worried for me, which is hard to deal with. Right. As we were just talking about, but it doesn't mean that I'm wrong or have done anything wrong. Absolutely. You can decide to let people know or not. It's your call and depends on a lot of things. We agree. Just know that you don't owe anyone an explanation. 
Not everyone will be able to respond well or with compassion. They might try to jump, dump their fears onto you. They might get angry, sad, co- coercive, manipulative. That doesn't say anything about you. It says a lot about them. Mm. I love this part. Good luck. Yeah. Because in Christians, they're like, there's such a thing as luck. <laughs> It's just Jesus and God. Yeah. They're like, good luck. May the luck be ever in your favor, deconstructing your religious trauma. Yeah. Um, I feel like everyone, everything they said in this post is what we just talked about, mm. right? It's exactly, there's a lot of factors here. I agree so much with the other comment from Captain Call, ringing back what they say, um, not to live a life of a lie. Maybe it's better to be truthful. I agree with them too. Again, depends on how old you are. And I think, I think, yeah, there's a lot of factors here. We're so sorry that it's so traumatic. That's why we've been doing this for over a year. Me and Zach really believe that this podcast and what we're talking about matters. Mm-hmm. And we believe a lot more of the internet and these conversations will become more part of the algorithm. Um, and uh, we hope you see this. Yeah. You know, because you're not alone. Yeah. And if you have questions, hit us up. Hit us up. Come get interviewed. Come get interviewed. Want to move on? Let's move right along. Moving right along. We're going to go to the form atheism now. By the user Garudas. Garudas. Now that's probably a normal name right there, right? That's a user right there. (laughs) Already the title. Garudas. All right. Christians took over our HOA community pool today to perform baptisms and an exorcism. (laughs) It's <laughs> brilliant. Love it. A group of about a dozen or so people showed up in the afternoon. They were loud and obnoxious enough that all the other families enjoying the pool on a lovely sunny day went back home. <laughs> they just picked up and left. Does anyone know if this is even legal? It happened in California today. Man, California. Yeah. <laughs> we're weird. <laughs> I hate to think that this might become a regular thing for the group. We have pool monitors but they're just older teens for the most part. And this is way above their pay grade. It's very much above their pay grade. hundred percent. It's agree. like my son, his first job. Yeah. He's at like the neighborhood around the corner, like <laughs> sitting up at the pool and like a group of like 50 people come in and someone busts out an acoustic guitar. Let's do baptism. Like you can hear them like yeah. while you're playing like Halo on your Xbox, a couple houses down. And then just like, yeah, like full on exorcism. Yeah, I love how it's, they had a baptism and an exorcism. <laughs> and an exorcism. <laughs> I just must have gotten pretty fun out there. Yeah. I, um, have you ever seen an exorcism? Uh, I mean, are I, you not sure? It's hard to believe Could any have of been. that shit, dude. People freak out. People speak in tongues. People get prayer. But like, there I've was... seen, I've seen wild prayer things where people are like, having an emotional breakdown and it looks like an exorcism because they're like, ah! you know, they're like yeah. freaking out. And then someone's praying and putting oil on their head and power of Christ compels you. And then they feel better. Yeah. And, and so maybe you could call that an exorcism. It just looks like mental health at its finest to me. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll never, f- yeah. I mean, yeah. Obvi, obvi. <laughs> yeah. And it's why cults are so powerful, but um, I've seen one. I was so young I've seen so much. Was this from the like one that you saw in Mexico? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Like those years were like wild. I don't know where we were. I just know that dad put oil on their head and there were more than one pastor and somebody looked at me because it was pretty traumatic because I saw them on the ground and they're they taking me to learn, you know, I was like there to learn. There's a demon in her and we're drawing it out or God's drawing, we're going to draw it out of her. It's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Whoa. Um, in about three years, I'm going to walk away wow. from this. Okay. I think about three years, I'm going to take my parents out and I'm going to be done. Okay. Because this is crazy. So, like, <laughs> the thought of that. So, I would imagine exorcisms aren't always that crazy. It's not like the movie. Like, fuck me, priest. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, circle, like, vomiting in the pool. <laughs> I don't think it's like that. I think it's more of, like, maybe a poor teenager or an alcoholic or somebody addicted to weed or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, now we have Jacob who has been smoking weed habitually every day. And we're going to draw this mirror of the demons that, you know, like that type of stuff where it's like, not like, but regardless wild. And to the person who lives there and I just have to say, move, 
<laughs> time to get a new place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, run for the hills. Uh, con- contact your HOA. Uh, contact your landlords. Call your HOA. What were you going to say? Well, I was like, uh, so you have a lot of rights as a, a home renter, uh, especially in a complex like this. And anyone that annoys you or does anything extreme, like makes loud noises at the pool, you can complain about. Right. And uh, if there's a religious act happening in a public area and it's making you uncomfortable, you know what? We have freedom of speech here in California and you can complain about it. I think worship itself is strange enough to anyone who isn't religious that if anyone came to your pool and just had a worship session with an acoustic guitar and some youth group, we're like, we're going to do some worship over here in the corner. And if you feel called, we'll go pray with you. It's like instantly you're invading public space Dude, with crazy. your religion and you should have the right to complain. And just to like walk to the pool that day. Like it would be you and your so friends, triggering. you got a bottle of champagne, you guys yeah. are ready to have like a little brunch session and you walk in, in the, in the pool as you're opening the gate to your community pool, there's like a man dumping a woman upside down, like, and the Holy Spirit filled and you're like, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, straight. What? Like I would be so, what? I'd be so bummed. I'd be like, oh yeah. What? This is so uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, and just uncalled for. And I would just, I would just like full dive in <laughs> right in between them. <laughs> I mean, you know, I would do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You could just invade their space uh, and just do try, a, try a not chicken to, fight. Yeah. A topless chicken fight. Yeah. Do something that they can't handle. And if I can tell you anything, Christians hate sinning. They don't like tits. And they hate boobs they and hate they hate boobs. penises. So if you're willing to just do a quick skinny dip, you'll quick probably dip. get them out of there. Yeah, or have an allergic reaction in the but pool, take your shorts off. I can tell you right now, they will complain to the HOA. And you'll get And you'll out. get in trouble. Yeah. But you'll win for the day. <laughs> you'll win the day. <laughs> I'm not sure what's better. Yeah, I don't know either. All um, I know is that's a wicked uh, post. And thank you so much for sharing it. It blew up on Reddit this last week. And if there's a new story that comes out about a group of religious people doing exorcisms in a community pool. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing baptisms in an exorcism. In, an exorcism. in my pool. <laughs> in my pool. What the hell, guys? We got two more posts here, and we got about 15 more minutes, so let's do it. Um, back over to the atheism form. We have user Sufficient Cow 4380 Now that's a name. I like it. Sufficient Cow 4380 says, Christian vet used my dog's death to solicit us to their church. How do I respond? Just sounds gnarly. Mm. Just sounds uncomfortable. We almost know what's coming. There is one mobile vet in town and we utilize them to euthanize our elderly dog. RIP, I'm so sorry. Um, We are still getting over the loss of our recent cat a year ago. (laughs) While the procedure went As well as it could, the vet said a prayer afterwards. I sat awkwardly on the couch and then sent us a card a few days later soliciting us to come to their church. I think it's inappropriate to solicit customers that way, and it's predatory to do it to grieving people. It wasn't apparent from Google that they were religious. Do I let this go? Write a review mentioning that the services come with a side of proselytization? (laughs) Something else? God damn. Yeah, no, that's a... uh Again, uh, right now you're like going through all the possibilities <laughs> of your head. Like what a terrible time, right? Um, that might be one of the worst times just for people. People in professional environments that force their religious beliefs upon their customers in professional environments, like a veterinarian or like your doctor. Like a chiropractor? Like a chiropractor? <laughs> yeah. That, this happened to Zachary. Yeah. So let's, and, not, let's not too, get too lost in that. But. Um Luckily, I I am just like, hey, uh, fuck your belief, and then just leave. But I never would ever say that out loud. It's just more of like, I'm going to write you off, but you're being insane. You shouldn't be forcing your beliefs upon people who are hurting because you're just using that vulnerability to try to convince them that you're right. Yeah, And that's just not a good way of going about it. To, To kill someone's dog for them and then to be like, I see you're grieving. There's a lot of love at my church. You want to come to my church? Yeah, I'm going to write you a letter. You should come to my church. It's like instantly so many red flags and so many negative things won about their whole business that you should definitely make a review about them notifying other people that said they're not in your situation. Because I can tell you right now, if I was going to go see a chiropractor and someone was like, but beware, 
They're an extreme evangelical. Yeah. And they're going to tell you some crazy stuff about Bud Light. You're like, my back's hurting more right <laughs> yeah. now. I probably would choose a different chiropractor, yeah, especially with someone who struggles with religious trauma. So please make a review. You don't have to ruin their career, but at least go on Yelp. Yeah. Let people know what you dealt with. Absolutely. I think it's important to let other people know, to know what they're getting into. Plus, then the Christians will, you'll get a lot more business with the Christian yeah, community. Totally. You know? Um, I just imagine the scene. Okay. What a traumatic scene for anybody. If this person has religious trauma, then probably very traumatic. Why? Because imagine the commanding nature of that doctor who comes into your personal space, your home, and the dog being a bigger dog is laying on the family room floor where the dog laid for 20 years. Mm. Same floor, random person who's a doctor that ultimately we give a lot of respect to the moment they walk in because they have the credentials and the meds. And they do this a lot of the time. <laughs> yes. And the needle goes in and push in, right? Because it's nice and soft and quick. We're just going to go ahead and get this done really fast. Here we go. It's, and then it's, we're just slowly, yes, okay. And I'd be like, <laughs> you're just, amen. Can I tell you a little something about the Lord Jesus Christ? I'd be like, Leave! I'd freak out. Oh, because for sure. I mean, we're, that we're, scene is like dead dog. Yeah. You killed, you killed the dog for me. Thank you. You said a prayer. And then it's like, so want to talk about Jesus? Mm. No, yeah. I, I, I mean, uh, power to you for not, for not getting physical. Um, if someone, <laughs> yeah. I'm no, I'm, I'm being dead serious. If someone put my dog down and one prayed over my dog in front of me, that would instantly be like, what? fuck you do with my dog? I'm like, I would instantly just be like, get the hell out of here. Where are you sending their spirit? Don't send them anywhere. But if they did it like secretly like that, like they're closing their eyes, like, amen. You, would you like to come to my church? I'd probably black out because they just, one, took the love of well, my you, life out of grieving. my hands. You're grieving so hard. I know, but that grief and would you, turn to rage, dude. I love it. You'd be like this. You'd be like, because <laughs> <laughs> it would be too much. <laughs> Too much. The <laughs> anger would hit, the confusion, and you'd be like, wait, no. And then you wake up, they'd be gone. No dog, and you'd be like, no. Oh. oh my God. Crazy. Oh my God. I just can't even. I'm so, so sorry that happened to you. T self responds and says, with enough time, I'd send them a message explaining calmly and concisely why that is poor behavior. Get them all in there. Treat it like a learning moment, not a parent disciplining their child. The vet can do with the inflow info what they wish. And then I'd also mention it in a public review. It doesn't have to be spicy. Just plainly point out what happened. If it isn't advertised, I think customers have a right to know what they are getting into. Bing, 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 bing. 100%. T-Self, uh, maybe I could send you some direct messages on some more advice for my life because it's a perfect response. Yeah, it was a good response. That's nice a, and calm. That's exactly how you're supposed to handle it. Um... Wild situation. I feel like this is also a callback to our first post about the individual who had been diagnosed with neurological conditions and then being told that it's their fault for walking away from the faith and leaving their abusive family is very high grieving, vulnerable place to be in. That's a place a lot of, you know, evangelicals go. That's they feel they're supposed to be there for people. And that's like a pretty unstable place for somebody to not know where to go when they're grieving. And so it's a trap. This right here is a total trap and um, it sucks. So if you're going to lose your dog and you're going to hire a mobile vet, now you know it's very possible you're going to also be encouraged to go to the church Mm -hmm. that they go to. Yeah, and maybe in the future, um, when you do anything professional, just ask if they're going to bring up their religion. Because legally, I'd have to tell you. Just be like, hey, just want to let you, the, wondering, we have a dog we need to be put down. Is, is that thing you can do? Is that something you offer? Yeah, we, we, we do those all the time. Great. We, we want nothing to do with religion. Are you, uh, I mean, ultimately, it's like, if you're not suffering, suffering from religious trauma, like if you don't have that inside of you from your childhood and all that tr- like upbringing, you might not give a fuck. Well, right? I mean, you must be like, okay, bye, thanks. We, obviously, this person gave enough of a fuck to post it. And like, this is kind of weird, right? It's like, yeah, yeah. So maybe next time just put that on the table to the vets you're working with, to the doctors you're working with. Hey, I don't do religion. Right. So please don't bring your religion into my life. Right. Yeah. And if you're, it, oh, you do do religion, well, then I'm going to get a new doctor. Yeah. It's like, so sorry. It's not going to work I think of it the same as like therapy. Yeah. Right. If you go to a Christian therapist versus a non-Christian totally. therapist. Totally. That's a great example. Yeah. One's therapy, one's not. <laughs> 
just kidding. Okay. I'm sure Christian therapists give great, great advice. It's just, no, I'm going to, I'm going to put a hard stop. Christian therapy and real therapy are not the same thing. Perfect. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. One science and one is faith. Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here comes our last post of moment to Reddit. Um, it's been good. It's, it's been, 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 been a good fun one. one yeah. Um, also from the atheism, atheism, atheism forum, this is user impressive returns. You're telling me <laughs> all of these users are anonymous. Yeah. All of them. The ultimate test of faith for a Christian dot, 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 dot. If you are having a heart attack, do you want me to pray to God or give <laughs> you CPR? This is the ultimate test of faith. As a Christian, if they are having a heart attack, would they put their faith in prayers with God? Or trust science and modern medicine and be given CPR. I have yet to meet one Christian who chooses prayer over CPR. Yeah. I mean, you know all about this, Nathaniel. I do. And we've talked a lot about this on the cast. My mm-hmm. own experiences helping people before their heart surgeries that know me from the past church life. And they're like, oh, you're so-and-so pastor's son. And I'm like, yes, I know you too. And they're like... You walked away from the faith. I was like, well, 15 years ago. And they're like, when are you coming back? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I hope you make it out of surgery. (laughs) You know, it's like, you're about to go in for heart surgery. And before that, you're to the nurse who's getting Mm -hmm. right. I've explained that a lot in this cast. That's happened a bunch to me. Um, I'm just going to read the first comments here. We'll go through these comments because they're all pretty great. Hmm. Budget message 3352, agnostic atheist says, my favorite are all the prayer warriors and people that thank God for healing instead of the doctors. Yeah. Impressive returns OP responds and says, ask the Christians why God waited 14 billion years for man to develop science and modern medicine to, uh, to treat or uh, to create CPR. And the last one here responding to that says, sweet dreams 69. <laughs> <laughs> or gem theory, you'd think with all the stuff in the Bible, all the stupid rules and make believe BS, like not wearing two fabrics, there would be a wash your hands to not spread disease. After all, it's divine inspiration, right? Why didn't God divinely inspire his followers to ditch slavery, treat women as equals, wash their hands? Because it's all BS meant to control people and hold power over them. Convince them there's an unseen evil working against them. Convince them they are sick, born into sin, and offer the cure. Discussing this stuff isn't just a class in school like people used to believe this horse shit. Ha. Mm. Ha. The whole, I mean, that's why it's, that's why, that's why it is a cult. That is what defines it as a cult is how much of Christianity is used for power. Most of it. Yeah. Most of it is used for power. Therefore, it can't be the right way. It can't be real. Yeah. And yeah, this is like a very common, I hear this in our own family a lot with our parents and um, a lot of believers, a lot of Christians, Jehovahists, Mormons, uh, like practicing Catholic Catholics, which the reason why I say practicing is because a lot of Catholics aren't practicing. Um is this sort of, you know, they get out of surgery, everything went really well. And it's it's a hard dynamic for me because like I want people to have their faith and their religion. That's what holds people together. I don't want I'm not trying to take people's religion from them. I'm just not wanting their religion to make me feel like don't make me feel bad for being alive. Or stop imposing your religion yeah, on stop everybody. Imposing religion on everybody, right? But like people gr- clutch onto their religion in times of fear, especially like surgery. And they get out of surgery and most of the time I hear this. How'd it go? Oh, it went really, really well. Mm, thank God. Right. Thank God. And in my head, I'm always like, what I play in my head is like, but what about the, like the three IVs I placed and all the blood work I drew and we caught your kidney failure. So we sur- we treated that before surgery, which you probably would have died in surgery if we didn't do your labs first. Um, and then all of the stuff they had to do during surgery, your heart did stop and restarted it. We did place three stents, which means that all of that fat you've been eating and, you know, those, those burgers and everything, you know, has led to heart failure. And that's why you're overweight and diabetic. And they wake up and they're like, oh, thank God. I'm like, thank you, God. Um, God is so good. God is so good. And I'm like, well, your doctor did a really good job. <laughs> you had a good surgeon. Then the patient goes, well, thank God for empowering my doctor. They, they always. And you're like, like, you, you get some rest now. Yeah. 
I'll be back in about an hour to check your urinal. Yeah. But that's what it is. It's just, it's always going to be something. And it, it feels like it's taking weight off of the real truth, which is like science and modern medicine. Yeah. And hard ass work from human beings and technology that's insane and amazing. And if you were alive 40 years earlier, if this was happening 40 years earlier, you would have died, but you didn't because of what humans have done. Mm. And so I'm not going to tell you all that, but that's what I experience as a nurse in the hospital all the time with religious mm. people. And so it is triggering and it sucks because I wish it wasn't as triggering and it's gotten a lot better as I've healed. Um, but yeah, it is modern science that saved your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Period. And there's no science in the Bible. And I, I agree. Yeah. Not much. Not much science in the Bible. At all. Um, uh, that whole insane, miraculous thing where the sun feeds plants and helps them grow with energy and all that. That's God. In the Bible. In the Bible. Right. Yeah. Um, not science. Yeah. We can't fully explain that too, by the way. And sadly, I fully believe that the religion is going to die with this generation. I think that the... Oh, man, I, just, I do not believe that at all. I mean, <clears throat> um, you, if you look at the numbers, man, if you look at the statistics on how much just from millennials sure. to Gen Z to now Evan's uh, generation, how many are stopping religion and stopping believing it, the numbers are so exponential that in just like two more generations and after the boomers die off and the generation after them just kind of die off the ones that are really dying for their religion who else is going to be dying for their religion we see religion start so many wars and any intellectual understands that the religion is the problem not the people and that the war is mainly started off the religion or that the people in power are using the religion to control the people and yeah. we can see that. And that comment was perfect, that it's just like the, the religion is there to, to control people. It's not It's not there for anything else. And anything that's fabricated to put on top of that to make you think that that's, where the, that's what the religion is there for, it's just there to convince you otherwise to follow the blind cult. Right. And if there's, there's so much doctrine in the Bible that is follow blindly, follow by faith. Why? Because none of it makes sense mm -hmm. and a lot of it is oppressive. So if you ask questions, you're not going to want to follow it. So follow it blindly. That's what Jesus wants for you. Mm. It's just not, it's not real. We want, <laughs> at least I know I want more, more truth. And th there's so much falsehood in the love yeah. of God. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's very conditioned. Uh, it's not unconditional. And uh, yeah, very well said. And uh, the last point is, there are a lot of Christians out there that would not choose, maybe in the moment they choose to, but like a lot of people have died and are dying all the time because of religious people that are choosing their faith over medicine to help their children or to help themselves. Luckily, God created them to die for that reason. Right. So yes. let, let, them, let them do that. What a great note to finish this one on. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. <laughs> what a good conversation that was. You're always dropping those bombs right at the end. You know what I mean? I like to drop bombs. Not on your moms. Don't drop bombs on your moms. Not That's on a song moms. by J Flip back in the Dirty Bird days. Mm. Dropping bombs on your moms. Great mm. song. J Flip. Let's go over to the game cam. I went right <laughs> through the mic, dude. <laughs> I've never done I'll blow it through the mic. Welcome to the game cam. Yes. Um, here on Moral Combat Podcast, we believe in connecting with our inner child, and so we like to play more or uh, moral. We like to play Mario Kart 64, Kart. and um, and we normally have nice big old controllers we've been using, but uh, they died. And so yeah, we're, we're using, using the small the switch. ones. We're using the switch, which makes every every time we go small controllers makes it a little iffy because it's hard. These are it makes because we have big hands, big hands, big boy hands. Yeah. Um, welcome to the game cam. That music in the background, produced by yours truly, Nene from the Bay. Um, thanks for sticking around. If you like to watch video games, because I mean, you know, be we're basically just streamers now, you know? Basically. Bowser it is. Browser. Bow browser. Browser. Wait, we did. Browser. We did Block uh, 4. We did Block 4. This is 5.0, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Double Decker 5.0, which means this is the fifth time that we're playing these games. Just to be clear, I won Big Donut last time you've won the and last I won two. block for it and i won skyscraper 4.0 i'm really on a roll right now yeah you've been winning with some crazy wins too. yeah i know here we go best out of three 
good conversation today, Zach. Good luck. I don't know, man. It's just whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's just what it is. It is what it is, big guy. Oh, <laughs> almost got you there, buddy. Oops, did not mean to do that. Oh, that for sure, it's over. Look who it is. Look who it is with the red shell. With the red shell. Oh, all those bananas are my bananas now. Oh, why do you have a star? Stars just make the games go, oh, almost drove into you. That was, why would I do that? That was crazy. Here you are. You're right here. Oh my gosh, that was the worst throws. I, that's what, I think that's why you've won the last few games is I panic, man. Oh, you and your damn star. Okay, see, I'm panicking right now. You are panicking. <sighs> Maybe it's the little tiny controller. <laughs> You know, I mean, it definitely is a lot harder. I, I, yeah. But right. I mean, I feel like the last time we played, I was like missing. Oh, wow. You're on me. <laughs> Let him go. Zach. Ooh. Oh, goodness. Oh, oh, I hit myself too. Those green shells really took us both Whoa. out there. That was no joke. <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> really got ourselves in a pickle there. Oh, goodness. Leave me alone. Goodness. God, man. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. I'm, I'm on you. I'm on you. Where are you going? Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? Mmm. Mmm. Wow, that was so well played. <laughs> that was really well played. <laughs> yeah, it says this. No, 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 no. Oh, goodness. Last second. No, no, no. No, 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 not happening, not happening, not happening. Oh, man, I felt like I was like an airplane, you know, like World War One. No, 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 no. Tied up with the one balloon here. We got green shells all over this place. Mm. 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 I want it. I want it. Oh, goodness. Yes. Come to me, my little boy. I got to win this one. You win. win this one. Take my ghost. I don't want it. Oh. No. Oh, who's going to win? Who's going to win? Oh. What is it, it going to be? What is it going to be? How did you get that? Ah, why did they give it to you? That was quicker. That was quicker. Sometimes it's fun just to risk the biscuit like that and see who takes the win. <laughs> My God, I can't believe you actually won that. <laughs> Seems a little unfair. Uh, I mean, that's the fate of the game. Well played. Thanks. I'm, I'm, I, I honestly thought I was going to give it to you. That was a great match. That was a good match. Ooh. You, you and your spike shell, man. Oh, goodness. Hi. Okay, oh, nice. Nathan. Okay, nice. Nathan. I thought you were somewhere else. Okay. Not well done. Oh, where are you? We both got boxes. Dude, I we have been on opposite sides of the map. Hold on. Okay, it's getting quiet again. Whenever it gets quiet, I get uncomfortable because I know we're supposed to be like talking on a podcast. We can't help it. God, what did I? Oh, man, I am so tired of cracking under pressure. <laughs> it's so annoying. I feel like the Sharks, the hockey team, always cracking under pressure. They do crack under pressure. You're about to feel a lot of pressure. That's good. I do good. Eat some bananas. Oh, wow, you ate all of them with your stupid. Double Another star. star. Double star, double star. Come to me no matter where you are. Gonna make you bleed. Oh, oh I wait. I just went too soon on that one. Got way too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's play a little chicken here. Ooh, oh, got you, baby. Are you? No! <laughs> Dude, knock it off. Like, get away. <laughs> I'm leaving you now. 
Goodbye, my friends. Farewell. So long. You just took my red shell. Nice. From that green, rogue green just is following me. Okay, you got another star. I kind of want this game to end now. I don't want to play. <laughs> this is getting really annoying. Yeah, you can't have my green shell. It's my green shell. Oof. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wanted that ready. I wanted that ready, Shell. Coming for you. No. Oh. Yeah. No. Coming just for you. No. Do, 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 do. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Nice. I'm invisible now. You can't see me. That worked out really well for me. Oops. Oh, Ooh, right in between, baby. Oh, oh I'm going to lose every game. <laughs> I'm going to lose every game. Something's happening. I'm cracking. I can't I can't win anymore. I can't I can't do it. <laughs> you go through phases. Man. I feel like I'm really trying too. Like and I feel like I'm playing okay. Nope. That was very close. You got real lucky there. Yeah, it's just like I only say like right now I I don't have much confidence. Like right now I'm lacking confidence in this game. If I'm being honest. Like I feel like I'm gonna lose. I mean it does make sense why you'd feel that way. Because you just <sighs> lost. Ooh, and I knocked you out of the map. Oh, under too. What a what a what a way to smash, Zach. You did real good. What a way to smash. Um I just like to say that's four in a row for the for the cast uh game cams for for myself. And um uh, as you can see the, the number two has really been taking taking some numbers. I, I love how it saves for a little bit. Um, oh. <laughs> I'd like to just offer my condolences. Would you like some prayer? It's hard. May peace be with you. Game's hard. My eyes hurt again. Well played. Um, I'm not doing that great on the uh, Mario Kart anymore. You go through phases. It will be the Skyscraper 5.0 next podcast. Yeah. And uh, maybe it's time to switch it up. Maybe. What would we do? Oh, game-wise? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. You keep winning. Let's keep playing. I don't know. I mean, I've really enjoyed playing Mario Kart, and there's nothing that's more of our childhood than Mario Kart. If, uh, if I could think of any other game that was like our childhood, it's a single-player game. It just like doesn't Zelda. It never gets old. Yeah. Multiplayer games were like, there was a few of them, and this was one of them, and this is the biggest one. Good game. Good game. Echo. Garage on. Dude, that was the first time you got in a minute. Yeah, it's good timing. Good timing. Terrible game playing. Good timing on the on the lights. Good timing. Um. Well, thanks everybody. Yeah. For thanks for being here. Being here, and hope to see you back next week. We'll be here. We'll definitely um, be here. We're going to be improving the studio a little bit. Maybe a new table and some new sound equipment because why not? Yeah. Nate has had this uh, top of the line, like very expensive mixing board yeah. uh, that he got a while ago. One of the cool ones that you can save settings and it's like, gee, 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 does yeah. all the cool stuff for you. <laughs> has like the screens and uh, we have just not been using it because as you can imagine, it's quite daunting to use something that high tech. Um, and we're going to try to bring it out here and upgrade the cast. Um, we're thinking about ordering some curtains. Um, and then we have a new table over here in the corner that we've always had that we've never used that Nathan pointed out today. It's the perfect table. It's perfect and table. It's perfect table. Uh, my thing is I just like the color of it. So we're gonna paint it. We're gonna and, paint it. And uh, we're gonna have some new upgrades. Which, next by the time. way, do you want to go to the? We want to go to the store real quick and buy some spray paint. Sure. Thanks everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, we'll see you next week. Next week. Bye. Bye.